There's this very interesting paper that was published by Scott Zimmerman and Russell Ryder, one of them a professor and the other one a light engineer. But what they said in this article, and these are the highlights, is that melatonin we know is a potent antioxidant and that it's actually produced within the mitochondria in response to sunlight and provides targeted protection of the mitochondria from reactive oxygen species. It's also protective against a wide range of diseases that are identified with mitochondrial dysfunction, including cancers, neurodegenerative diseases, cardiovascular disease, and also diabetes. And it may have a role in the prevention of diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and even as we'll talk about COVID-19. Infrared radiation from the sun stimulates something called cytochrome C oxidase. And that in turn tells the mitochondria in all of our cells to stimulate melatonin production. In fact, this is not very well known because this production of melatonin, Kyle, is happening inside the mitochondria. It's taken us a lot of time and energy and technology to be able to detect those that type of level. Where we first detected melatonin was in the blood, and that's the, that's the backup plan at night. But what we're starting to find out is that melatonin production in the mitochondria is actually the frontline cooling system for the mitochondria. As you can see here on this slide, less than 5% of the body's melatonin is produced in the pineal gland, and greater than 95% of the body's melatonin is produced on site in the mitochondria. This is a quote from Zimmerman and Ryder. He says, it has now been shown that the mitochondria produce melatonin in many cells in quantities which are orders of magnitude higher than that produced in the pineal gland. This subcellular melatonin does not necessarily fluctuate with our circadian clock or release into the circulation system, but instead has been proposed to be consumed locally in the mitochondria in response to free radical density within each cell, in particular in response to near infrared exposure. Based on an optical and biological review of the literature, it is proposed that the near infrared portion of natural sunlight, and we'll define that, stimulates an excess of antioxidants like melatonin in each of our healthy cells, and that the cumulative effect of this antioxidant reservoir is to enhance the body's ability to rapidly and locally deal with changing conditions throughout the day. In this approach, the role of the circulatory melatonin produced by the pineal gland is to provide an efficient method of delivering supplemental melatonin during periods of low cellular activity, that would be at night, and solar stimulus to damaged or aging cells in both diurnal and nocturnal animals. While circulatory melatonin may be the hormone of darkness, in other words, the pineal gland at night, provided that there's no light hitting the retina. However, subcellular melatonin, that is intramitochondrial melatonin, may be the hormone of daylight. In other words, this intramitochondrial melatonin is a result of the person going out into the sunlight, specifically infrared radiation. Yeah, so near infrared is just a aspect of the entire spectrum of light. Here we see the solar spectrum, and we're specifically looking at near infrared radiation. That is the part from 760 nanometers to 1400 nanometers, and you cannot see this. How you experience near infrared radiation or light from the sun is a feeling of warmth. And that is because this type of light from the sun can penetrate deep into the epidermis, the dermis, and even the subcutaneous tissue, depending on the wavelength. And it's perceived as heat because the transfer of this energy actually stimulates the heat receptors in our skin. And that is how it is felt. You'll often feel this, right? If you're in the sun and your back is to the sun and you've got a shirt on, you'll feel that warmth on the back. That is infrared radiation speaking to you. 